All right, guys, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft, and I'm here to bring Game 2 between FXO's ASD and TSL's Pult in this best of three. First game, going to TSL Pult after holding off the 6-gate all-in from the Protoss player. And now in the bottom right, we have the player who did that 6-gate. Will he be able to take the second game of this set? Will he try another 6-gate? It is FXO's ASD as the Teal Protoss. And just over yonder at the top left, this is the guy who held off the aggression. He needs one more game to secure the victory of this set. It's time for TSL Pult to show us what he's made of. He is the Blue Terran. Now, uh, cross spawn on Entombed Valley, so it is going to be another long distance map here, another pretty uh, far walk from base to base. And uh, we will see what these uh, builds will these players open up with. Last game, remember, ASD tried to break through the front door, but I, I just felt like he never really had enough firepower to do it, despite having a bunch of sentries, you know? If you're going to go for that 6k all-in, it really only works against a Terran who has one to two bunkers tops. If they've got three, then it's just way too hard to break through. Uh, and, and you know, Polt did a great job of getting stim pack pretty quickly, too. I thought that stim was going to come long after the 6 gate started, but it came within a few seconds be, uh, after the engage began. So that was a really good job by Polt, despite going for a gasless expansion. Now... What is going to happen, man? This is pretty exciting stuff. The probe has already checked the top right-hand corner. Doesn't see anything up there. He's going to go over to the top left. Someone apparently didn't inform ASD that uh, it, well, it's either this this set is forcing cross-spawn or it's not. So I guess someone hasn't informed myself or informed ASD that there is or isn't cross-spawn, unfortunately. Uh, we will see, actually. It looks like the SCV also going to check the bottom left. So probably was not a cross-spawn enabled map, but as it is, it is. And the probe has been able to make its way inside the base. No gas. And it probably did see that. No, it didn't. So at this point, uh, ASD sees no gases. But he didn't see the double supply depot yet. And on the way out, he's going to see that. And he should be able to know, all right, probably a CC first. And that supply depot, of course, used to block the uh, probe inside the base to guarantee the kill. And it looks like that probe has nowhere else to go. But it's going to go down to the bottom where it was able to confirm the command center so that was a good job of that probe really uh just realizing i guess that there is this little nook this little peninsula uh where you go down to the coast and and check a take a look over and check out the command center so that was a good job and now the scv also doing its due part to get inside the protoss base and find out exactly what's going on and it will see a stalker being chrono boosted out and the Stalker gets the SCV kill, so the Chrono Boost couldn't have come at an earlier time. That was uh, really well done by the Protoss. And now, we've got the same actual openings from both players. So, will ASD go for that 6-gate again? I think on this map, it's also very effective, a 6-gate that is. Uh, reason being is the ramp, somewhat wide open, but you've all, you can also break through the side back here, and if you want to, you can put a pylon down here and warp up to the high ground, assuming you get uh, vision up there. So, it's, it's not a bad map to do it on, and uh, will he or not? That Stalker takes a little bit of a punch to its shields, but then decides to fall back and uh, will not die. Will not take any permanent damage. And back at home, it looks like Polt here adding on the refinery so he can get his gas going. Uh, it's pretty common, too, to see the Terrans get that double gas. It's it's like if you go for the gasless one racks, then you better get the gases soon uh, after that CC's up. Otherwise, you, do, you will fall behind and tech to a Protoss player. So it's a good idea there to get the double gas going. And there we see the first... Uh, actually, the first 50 goes to Tech Lab, but the next 100 goes to Stim Pack. And back at home, ASD here thrown up the same signs as he was last game but now this is really up to him will he throw down a robotics facility yeah there we go so it is a three gate robo opening and this one's pretty safe this is i think it ranks among the safest openings for protoss against terran reason being that uh, you get the observer out and you can quickly transition into immortals or colossus depending on what you really need so this is a really solid opening from uh, from asg and i think I think in game two, you can't just do another six game, man. I mean, you could, it's possible, but it's just like, why, you know? It's, I guess it's fun for the viewers, but it really does put you at risk of losing the set, especially considering Polt now has two bunkers up, and if he should get a third, it just becomes, it just, will. well, what happened last game is what it becomes. So, uh, good for ASG, he gets a Robo, a Robo Bay up, and he will have 
that tech working for him. Observer now going to be the first unit out on the field, and probably we'll see Immortals following that up. Obviously, less sentries this time as well. That's another reason why the 6 gate with the sentries is considered all in, because he makes so many sentries, and that sucks up all your gas. So uh, it's very hard to make any type of transition out of that. But um, these are just purely defensive sentries. This is not an offensive oriented garage of sentries. These are being stored for, uh, for better days. And uh, there's the forge coming up. And we will have plus one weapons coming as well. Looking like we're going to have a nice macro game here after the intense opening from game one. Starport on the way here and we'll probably... Uh, actually, no reactor coming on the factory. That's interesting. Usually most turns get a reactor in the factory and then get the starport on the reactor to make medibacks. But I wonder if he's going to go for banshees. Ah, very interesting. It looks like he's going to punch out a few banshees here, which uh, it's, it's a little less common uh, this late in the game. You know, banshees usually, if you're going to go for them, comes a lot earlier. But if a Protoss gets Robo, then... Oh, no, okay. No, the starport has land on the reactor. I'm sorry. And it uh, looks like we're going to have medibacks after all. Got a little confused there because uh, the barracks was so close to the starport, but it looks like he uh, did a full swap and moved the starport all the way down. And so, nothing out of the ordinary. And we do have the tech labs researching all the upgrades they should be getting. Back at home, plus one armor on the way. Stalker is being kept inside the base because it looks like ASD, uh, you know, he saw the starport and he knows there's a possibility of a medevac drop, but he will see, wow, this is a pretty large push from TSL Pult, who has plus one weapons finishing now, and so this is a pretty mega push, and will uh, the Protoss be prepared for this? I don't know, man, he's only got two immortals and a handful of sentries, one photon cannon at the front door trying to grow a boost out plus one armor right now to negate the one weapons but not only will plus one finish for the for Polt, he's also going to have concussive shields and uh and combat shields wow this is a nice one from the terran player and asc immediately drops down emergency force shields but he loses a sentry so uh, that was not good he can't afford to lose sentries like that you need to keep every single one alive because they allow you to buy time uh, uh inevitably for this push ASC needs to bring out some more forces right now. He's got to be careful too. Might lose that. Immortal has some micro to the back, but unable to. Immortals are such a clunky unit. Sometimes it's really hard to control it. And now it's all going to come down to ASD. Will he be able to hold on to this push? He needs to be very careful because um, this Terran army has a, a lot of upgrades going for them. And uh, ASC now is about to finish plus one. So now his upgrades have caught up, but... That was a very tenuous situation, and it looks like in the back, we have a, a command center coming out for Polt, so he will look to expand behind this aggression. And uh, this is a really nice play, I think, overall by, by the Terran. He can, at the very least, keep the Protoss boxed in on two bases for a long time, uses his Marauder and Marine range to take out a Photon Cannon and a Stalker, and all the while just baiting force fields out so that the sentries won't have an unlimited amount of energy. Uh, this is just, overall, uh, I think a very good play. And ASD still cannot push down that ramp. I think he might try to, though, but it's so risky, man. When you come down this ramp, you, you know, you allow the Terran to engage on a much more open surface area, thereby making your force fields less effective. And I think that's why ASC is hoping to get the Marines and Marauders up the ramp where he has cannon uh, backup, but it's just not happening, man. He's only been able to force field just a small amount of Marines and Marauders, and that really isn't enough to, um, to really turn the, the, the battle in his favor. In fact, he is getting focused down. It will probably fall as it's burning now, and there we go, takes gets taken out by the Photon Cannon, but um, even with the factory down, it doesn't really matter. That was just kind of like the Flag Bearer. Now the Flag Bearer is down. Sure, the morale of the Terran forces are uh, maybe a bit lower than they were before, but it really doesn't make much of a difference at all. And Pult here, um, I actually, I'm a little surprised he didn't send a couple forces to this backside just to make sure that the Protoss doesn't go for that expansion. I guess he does see the rocks, and he knows that the rocks are still there. Um, baiting force fields out once again. Really nice play. And you know, the longer that Polt keeps this up, it's it's actually re really nice because he's got the third command center up back at home. And so he keeps a one base advantage. Um, and that's all the difference that he needs to make to win this game. 
he, all he has to do is keep that one base advantage and not allow ASD to get a third. And you guys can see that reflected in the supplies right now. 157 to 111. SEVs making up a large chunk of that difference at 63 over 48. Oh man, this is not looking good at all for uh, ASD. I wonder what he's going to do, man. He's really cornered in. At this point, he's got four Immortals. I'm wondering why he hasn't just said, I'm going to push out now and try to break free. Uh, I think at this point, he's got so many forces, he should at least give it a shot. But his sentries are exposed in the front. Oh man, a lot of sentries taking some hits there, but it looks like he's got enough firepower to break through here. Now the force is actually working against him but they have dissipated. Stalker's blinking forward, and he's gonna be able to pick off some medevacs on the retreat, and ASG has finally broken free, but reinforcements are coming out uh, at very quickly from the Terran, and this is going to be a close battle in the middle of the map. At this point, ASG should look to get his Nexus down as well, but there's a Marine chilling at the third, so even if he sends a probe out there, he needs to send a unit to back it up as well, an escort. Uh, and he, he might just not even care about it at this point. He, I think he's just going to go for a big counterattack. He's actually been able to pick off almost all the medevacs. There was a good amount, and now it's only down to three. But too many Marauders on the ground here, man. And they are about to get two weapons and two armor. So this is, uh, this is getting really bad for Protoss. And um, I can see Colt now realizing, okay... All right, I'll give up the Protoss. Uh, I'll give up the middle of the map to the Protoss. I'll just break through these rocks so that if you do come with an attack, oh, I'm so prepared. I can just go defend my uh, third very easily up on the high ground here. And, uh, you know, just taking every precaution to make sure he doesn't get killed by a counter push. And we can see that ASG has no intention of getting a Nexus. This is it, man. He is going in with what he's got. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gate robo with, I believe, two, two. So this is it, man, but the concave not so good, and the frontal immortal will go down. Force field's coming out. On the right side, it looks like he's going to win this battle, but he loses another immortal on the left. This is a close one, ladies and gentlemen. The, all the zealots have gone down, however, and more marauders and marines coming through. ASG cannot hang on. That was just a little bit too much for him to handle, and I think... The base disadvantage is what really got him. It was Polt having too many bases and in fact getting a fourth base as well. So that just really makes it almost impossible to win against when you're only on two. Uh, that's uh, pretty, pretty dire straits. Anyways, I just wanted to go ahead and mention that this uh, entire set is actually a best of five. Forgot to mention that at the beginning of this cast and I uh, missed missed it at the beginning of the first game of this set. I called it a best of three, so I do apologize, but there will be another game coming out after this. And so far, Polt is up 2-0 against ASD. Will ASD be able to mount a comeback? Find out in the next game.